This shows a portion of the Fort Benning map of the area over which this problem will take place. This is Maxi Ridge, and here is Humphreys Hill. 800 yards to the southeast is Rive Ridge, the northern part of which is covered with woods and scrub brush. About 800 yards further to the southeast is Elliott Hill. This is Smith Hill. And this is Singleton Hill. The enemy line extends along Rive Ridge. The 1st Battalion, 29th Infantry, an interior battalion, is attacking southeast on a front of 1,000 yards with two companies in the assault. Company A on the right. Company D, a machine gun company, is supporting the attack from positions on Maxi Ridge and Humphreys Hill. The first platoon of Company D is firing from positions on Maxi Ridge. The squads are located in well-defilated positions and have taken advantage of available cover and concealment. Squad leaders are close enough to their squads to shout orders to the gunners and to observe and adjust the fire of their squads on the targets. Section leaders are in positions from which they can observe and control the fire of their sections. The ammunition carriers form section chains from the transportation, which is located at the platoon distributing point for the guns for rapid movement of ammunition by hand. At the command post, the agent corporal is in charge of messengers. The platoon sergeant, who is second in command, is near the command post. The platoon leader has selected a position from which he can observe and control the fire of his platoon. The transport corporal has the transportation of the platoon well concealed in a small wooded area in rear of the platoon. So the company commander says move your platoon to positions on Rive Ridge, near the southern edge of the 4th entrance of wood, to support the attack of Company A. The company command poses in the draw at the southwest corner of those 4th entrance of wood. All right, Hammock, you go back to the uh, truck position, tell the transport corporal we're moving forward to that next ridge. Have him bring the trucks up to the gun positions at once. Any questions? No, sir. Move on. Section leaders, section leaders, platoon sergeant, agent corporal, join me. A company has just taken that hill to our front. I'm going forward at once. Ern Young, you bring the entire platoon forward on trucks. Formation, line, 50 yards interval between vehicles. Stop near that mound. Section leaders will report to me there. Agent Corporal, get the instrument corporal and the messengers and come with me. Are there any questions? Move out. The platoon leader accompanied by the agent corporal, the instrument corporal and the messengers moves forward to the ridge occupied by Company A. The platoon leader and his party get as far forward in the reconnaissance truck as cover and concealment will permit. They then dismount 
and continue forward on foot. The platoon leader reports to Captain Matthews of Company A near the crest of Rive Ridge. Greetings, Captain. I got the first platoon of D Company coming up on trucks to support you. Well, gee, I'm certainly glad to see you. What's the dope? The enemy still holds that big hill to our front. The battalion on our right has taken that hill. My assault platoons are down there in the draw. My third platoon is in the woods over there. I'm going to outflank the enemy position by sending my third platoon over and around that hill and through the woods beyond. I want you to cover the advance of my third platoon by opening fire on the enemy position on the northwest slope of that hill, just above the clay bank. You may open fire as soon as you're in position. The platoon will move out when you open fire. I'll be right there. Any questions? No, sir. Be about 10 minutes, Captain. I'll be fine. Let us look at the situation on the map at this time. The platoon leader received his instructions from the captain of Company A near the crest of Rive Ridge. The enemy is located on the forward slope of Elliott Hill. The battalion on the right has taken Smith Hill. The assault platoons of Company A have advanced to the forward slope of Rive Ridge. The reserve platoon of Company A is concealed in the 4th Infantry Woods. This platoon is to move over Singleton Hill and through the woods beyond to outflank the enemy position on Elliott Hill. We left the machine gun platoon on Maxi Ridge. The platoon leader must now select the positions from which to support the attack of Company A. Before starting on reconnaissance, the platoon leader directs the instrument corporal to obtain the range to the enemy position with the rangefinder. In making his reconnaissance, the platoon leader takes with him the agent corporal and the messengers. He reconnoiters for locations of targets, positions from which to engage the targets, routes to the positions, and determines the methods to be used in engaging the targets. He also tests for safety for friendly troops. Meanwhile, back on Maxi Ridge, as soon as the platoon leader's order was completed, the section leaders order their squads out of action, preparatory to the forward displacement of the platoon. The transport moves forward to positions near the guns, where the squads load their equipment on the trucks. They move forward under command of the platoon sergeant. The formation is line of squad trucks, as prescribed by the platoon leader. Full advantage is taken of cover and concealment in moving to the new positions. While the first platoon is moving forward, the second platoon remains in position on Humphreys Hill ready to engage emergency targets and counterattacks if they develop. Under command of the platoon sergeant, 
The platoon moves as far forward in its trucks as cover and concealment will permit. The advance from this point must be made by hand. The transport corporal takes charge of the transport and moves it into the woods to take advantage of the best available cover and concealment from aerial and ground observation. The platoon leader and his party, after completing the reconnaissance, return to the vicinity of the mound on Rive Ridge. The platoon leader signals to the section leaders to join him. After they arrive, the entire party moves forward so as to be able to see the targets representing the enemy. The instrument corporal has determined the range to the enemy positions and returns to announce it to the platoon leader. Upon receipt of this information, the platoon leader will issue his order to the platoon sergeant, section leaders, and agent corporal. Range 750. Okay. The enemy still holds that red scarred hill to our front. Italian on our right has taken that hill. B Company on our left holds that hill. The assault platoons of A Company are held up in the draw to our front. The reserve platoon is in those woods. It'll move over that hill into the woods just beyond and flank the enemy position. We support that attack. First section will go into action there and cover that part of the enemy positions from that bare spot, extending right 50 mils to that group of scrub oaks. Range, 750. Medium, overhead. Safety limit, that mound in the draw. Four chests per gun. Report when ready. Are there any questions? Yes, sir, when do I open fire? On my signal. On back, come with me. While the platoon leader is issuing his order, the squads work forward with their equipment to a point just in rear of the area to be occupied. The section leader, first section, signals to his squad leaders to join him. While the squad leaders are coming up, the section leader makes a brief reconnaissance and selects positions for the guns. The section leader now has the necessary information to issue an order to his squad leaders. The enemy still holds that red hill in front of us. Company A, of whom we are to support, is going to attack that hill by moving its reserve platoon over that hill and through the woods beyond. The other platoons of Company A are in the draw just in front of us. They are going to attack straight toward that hill. We are going to support the attack. Mount your guns in positions to fire on the right half of that hill. First squad there, second squad there. Rain 7.50, fire order later. The platoon leader takes the section leader of the second section to the area to be occupied by his section. He points out to him the part of the target that the section is to cover by fire and gives him such additional orders that apply to his section.
the leader of the second section assembles his squad leaders and gives them the enemy situation. The location of our own troops. The plan of attack, the mission of the section, the position for each gun, the range to the target, and tells them that he will issue his fire order later. All squad leaders now have the necessary information to put their guns into position. The first section, having received the order in advance of the second section, should be well along in the occupation of their position. In many situations, the order for both sections may be given at the same time from a central point. The squads move into position carefully, keeping low, dragging their equipment, and taking full advantage of cover. Every effort is made to place the guns into position without disclosing their location to the enemy. Over in the second section, the leader has ordered his section into position on wheel mounts. The action of this section is screened from enemy observation by the scrub brush covering the area, which enables them to occupy the position more rapidly. The platoon leader returns to a position near the center of his platoon where he can supervise the occupation of positions and check on the ammunition chains. Corporal Hard, you take Hammock with you and report to commanding officer of A Company who's in the edge of those woods over there. Keep me informed as to the situation in the rifle company and his desires for fire. Our command post will be near that mound. Juan, you go back to command post to Company D and that draw and notify Captain Black the platoon is in position ready to fire. You stay there. Sergeant Young, you go back to truck positions and see that the trucks are properly concealed. Establish my command post at that mound. I'll be up forward behind that bush. Got that? That. Okay. Under the supervision of the platoon leader, Section leaders and squad leaders, all squads have occupied their positions. The section leaders are now ready to issue their fire orders, which are repeated by the gunners. Range 750. Range 750. To your front. To your front. Small Red Hill. Small Red Hill. Center of Hill Lodge Bass Pot. Center of Hill Lodge Bass Pot. Left the skirmish line. Left the skirmish line. Standing right 50 mils. Standing right 50 mils. Group of scrub trees. Group of scrub trees. Scissors. Scissors. Overhead. Overhead. Take the limit that small mound. Take the limit that small mound. Medium. Medium. Four chest per gun. Four chest per gun. At my signal. At your signal. The section leader of the second section issues a fire order to place the fire of his section on that part of the target assigned to his section by the platoon leader. In many cases, on account of the obscurity of the target, it will be better for the section leader to designate the target by laying a gun and requiring the squad leaders and gunners to look through the sights. Since the fire order of the section leader indicated overhead fire, 
The gunner applies the gunner's rule to check the point on the ground to which the troops can advance with safety. When the troops pass this point, his fire is masked and he must cease firing. The safety limit is announced by the gunner. The section leader also applies the safety rules by using the inverted sight leaf in the field glasses. When all guns are ready, section leaders signal to the platoon leader, ready. The platoon leader then signals, commence firing. The signal is transmitted by the section leader to number two, who repeats the signal to the gunner. Fire is opened simultaneously by all guns to secure surprise fire as well as high initial volume. Leaders must be on the alert to see that fire orders are properly carried out. They must be prompt to correct errors in execution. If necessary, section leaders go to gun positions to make corrections. The platoon leader observes and controls the fire of his sections. He keeps in touch with the situation, continually observes for new targets, replaces casualties, and supervises supply. He anticipates opportunity for displacement To be prepared to displace forward without delay, the platoon leader assembles the platoon sergeant and section leaders. All right, you go back to the agent, Corporal. Yes, sir. Section leaders, section leaders, platoon sergeant. When our fire is masked by the advancing riflemen, I'm going forward to that hill by way of that nose. Second section will go out of action on wheeled mounts and follow me by the same route. Carry six chests per gun. First section will stay in position under the command of the platoon sergeant. Guard against counterattack from those woods. It will come forward when I signal from the big red spot on that hill. Are there any questions? Move out. The rifle platoons have advanced and the fire of the machine gun platoon has been masked. To effectively support the rifle company, a forward displacement must be made. The platoon leader tells the platoon sergeant that he is moving forward as previously planned. He signals to the second section to go out of action and follow him. The forward displacement must be started as soon as the progress of the assault units and the activity of the enemy make it possible to secure more advanced gun positions. The platoon leader, accompanied by a messenger, leads the section under cover toward Elliott Hill. When the situation allows it, the platoon leader makes use of his reconnaissance truck.
The platoon sergeant and the leader of the first section keep a sharp lookout for emergency targets. The most favorable position from which the enemy can launch a counterattack is the woods to the right front. The average range estimation of the leaders to this point is 900 yards. The sights are set at 900 yards and the guns are laid on the edge of the woods. However, the leaders are on the alert to place fire on a counterattack coming from any direction. As the second section approaches the southern nose of Singleton Hill, the platoon leader observes a counterattack coming from the woods southeast of Elliott Hill. He immediately orders the section into action, indicating a well defilated position from which the section can fire on the counterattack. Usually, the section displacing forward, however, will not be in a position to engage the counterattack. The platoon sergeant who is in command of the first section on Rive Ridge also observed the counterattack. Counterattack! Right front! Watch my burst! Right flank! Left flank! Rapid! Rapid! The platoon sergeant, by a speedy method of target designation, has placed the fire of the section on the counterattack targets in a very short time. The second section on the southern nose of Singleton Hill went into action rapidly and is placing effective fire on the counterattack targets. The fire of the platoon has stopped the counterattack. Aided by the support of the machine gun unit, the rifle units have been able to continue the advance. After the counterattack was stopped, the second section moved forward to a position on Elliott Hill. The platoon leader signals to the platoon sergeant to move the first section to Elliott Hill. The first section goes out of action quickly. And under command of the platoon sergeant moves toward Elliott Hill. <laughs> 